Good evening, everybody. It's Steve with Real Progressives. And it's uh, pretty freaking late at night. But I wanted to talk about something that's been eating me alive lately. And, and that is the environment. You know, I've talked to you all ad nauseum about modern monetary theory. and have tried to explain its application in a number of uh, ways. One of the most important ways that we can talk about modern monetary theory in particular is the immediacy of its ability to implement a major change, a cataclysmic, a, a massive disruptive change to the way we view society today. So when I think about modern monetary theory, right, it's not that I love our system. It's not that I'm madly in love with our system. It's that right here, right now, knowledge of the existing system allows us to make informed decisions. And unfortunately, we made a lot of decisions, quite frankly, on faulty information. Not quite as bad as the aluminum rods in Iraq, but pretty damn bad. Over and over again, by being led to believe that the nation is broke, by being led to believe that we can't afford nice things, that we've got to scrounge for dollars, that we have to find money, etc., it allows the powers that be to sit on their hands and not do a goddamn thing to change the environment or change anything about our lives as it stands. It allows them to have free reign to basically tell us to shut up and eat our peas. But one thing that has been becoming crystal clear with the bees dying out, and with the bees die, we die, right? And when you look at the changing of the, the, uh, the climate and you look at the warming, and you watch as the seas change, and you watch as the uh, acidification of the oceans occurs and you watch as the algae spreads and different things are brought back from uh, you know old uh, you know Arctic ice and so forth that are being released into the uh, environment once again and this is very very dangerous that's very very scary stuff and it's happening right before our very eyes um, and you know if we don't take dramatic action now we're not going to have anywhere to live and, and that's of great concern to me. Um, beyond the pipelines, beyond the, um, the uh, desires for uh, uh, sustainable agriculture, uh, for humane agriculture, for a whole host of things. I'm very, very concerned about the fact that we are told that we can't afford to implement these things, that we're looking at the Paris Accord, for example, as this big deal, when the reality is it's still just nibbling around the edges. It's not anything substantive, not in any meaningful way. Not when you believe that we're right around the corner from a mass extinction. Not when you believe that we are right around the corner from some cataclysmic disaster. And so when I think about modern monetary theory, I don't think about it in terms of like some nerdy game of uh, economics. I think about it like it's an enabling force to allow us to save our lives. Nothing more than that. And, and for many people, they have a, a fetish about how they view economics. They're not interested in new information. They're not interested in anything as it ties to getting things done today, immediately, etc. So when I talk about the idea that taxes don't fund spending, I'm not just saying it because it's a great buzzword, because it makes for a good bumper sticker or an even better t-shirt. I'm saying it because without that knowledge, we are end up in a multi-tier war trying to get environmental changes passed. Now, in my mind, I want to save the planet and I want to save lives. Two very vital things that I care about that drive almost every decision I make. And when you look and you hear the people say, well, we got to end the Fed. Okay, so hypothetically, let's say we didn't have an environmental crisis going on. Let's say the earth wasn't warming. Let's say we didn't have serious concerns about losing the state of Florida and other things. Some people might say that's a good thing. But in all fairness, though, if we didn't have these immediate concerns hitting us right now as we speak, maybe we could worry about some really cute ideas about changing the way this is done or changing the way that is done, these extraneous things that make us feel good. But right now, right here, right now, without changing a goddamn thing other than the way we think, we can afford to have Medicare for all. And we can afford to immediately 
transition to green, sustainable energy and an environment that we can all live healthy lives. Now, because of knowledge of modern monetary theory, in other words, how our federal financing actually works today, not in some futuristic fashion, not if we implement it. Well, MMT sounds good in theory, but no, it's happening right now. That's why it matters. MMT wouldn't matter to me if we had to implement it. I would be looking at something else possibly if we have to go through 20 steps to implement something. No, I'm talking about it's here today. So because it's here today, it saves lives today. If you understand that, and you start thinking in a grand scale of what it is that we need right here, right now, all of a sudden your decision-making processes are going to be vastly, vastly different. And I think that you know this meme that we've used quite frequently, um, is, it's one of my favorite memes out there. I don't know if you all pay attention to this stuff or not. But this meme right here should be one of those eye-opening, jaw-dropping, are you kidding me kind of memes that make you stop and think. Well, what the hell are they talking about? Why is it that we can do this? And the reality is the reason we can do this is because our government is the keystroker of dollars. And those dollars, as long as we tax them, are valuable. Okay? Taxes don't fund or pay for stuff, but taxes do drive currency. That's why our dollar doesn't lose its value. That's why our dollar matters because we tax them. So all that nonsense aside, what if we could immediately do whatever it took today to save our environment? I mean, if you believe that this is that important and progressives universally claim the environment is that important, I say, prove it to me. Green party, I'm looking at you. You say the environment is big, you say it's super important, yet you put these artificial constructs for your AMI, we gotta green the dollar, we gotta end the Fed, we gotta do this, we gotta stop banks from lending, we gotta do all these hundreds of things before we can save the planet. Not acceptable, not acceptable by a long shot because we'll all be dead while you're greening the dollar. In the meantime, we know for a fact that Republicans have signed the Norquist Pledge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google is your friend, look it up. The Norquist Pledge, every single freaking Republican signed onto the pledge that said they will not raise taxes. Now, in your old life, before you understood economics, you thought, well, God, man, they're gonna starve the economy. No wonder we're all dying because they're not raising taxes. Wrong. What we need to be looking at is the fact <clears throat> that we don't need to raise taxes to pay for things. We don't, by a long shot. For 40 years, we have starved our economy of actually spending into it. We've spent with impunity on bombs, but we have done nothing to modernize our energy grid. We have done nothing to modernize the way that our, our, our businesses actually use energy. We have done nothing, and quite frankly, I'm not worried about businesses paying for it. Why should I? Our taxes don't pay for it. Let's save our businesses. Let's save our country. And let's freaking subsidize goddamn green energy. Goodness knows we subsidize a bunch of other bullshit. Why wouldn't we take that opportunity and subsidize saving our planet? Now, right now, like yesterday even, right? What Republican, what other business owner, what wealthy person, whatever, as long as you encumber that money and force them to do specific changes with that money, there is no reason on earth that you can tell me that we shouldn't do that. Because if your first instinct is you got to tax them, then you're not really that worried about the environment, are you? You're really not that worried about the environment. And you really don't believe what 97% of the climate scientists say that we're heading for extinction, that we have all these problems, that it's man-made and it's happening and it's accelerating as a result of our activity. If you believe that, then your cognitive dissonance should place that as a higher priority 
than getting your tax fetish on. Because you know you're going to get into a multi-pronged war trying to save the planet. You're going to get into a multi-pronged war. Who cares about the other side of this equation right now? We have to survive, and then we can fix other things that are lower down on the hierarchy of needs. But I always say we need to have Medicare for all now, right? We've got to have student debt relief now. Why? Because these things imprison us. They block our usefulness in our lives, our own self-actualization. They block our ability to participate in our country's needs. I mean, there's so many things that are not being done in our country right now because we're strap pushing paper from one side of the desk to the other side of the desk. You know, we talk about a federal job guarantee that we could implement today, right now, to eradicate all involuntary unemployment. These are things that we can do today because we are informed and we understand federal financing and we no longer believe the lies that the nation is drowning in debt and how can we sustain it? We know that because our government is the creator of the U.S. dollar. You can talk about the Federal Reserve. If that gets you off, go in the mirror, play games with yourself, salivate, dream, perspire, do whatever it is you do when you fantasize and fetishize about the Rothschilds and whatnot. I, however, am looking at this green meme next to my face right here, and I am looking at it, and I'm saying, that's what I care about. Now, if you care about all these other things over that, you and I probably aren't on the same team anyway. I'll just be honest with you. Probably not on the same team. I want to save lives. I'm not, I'm not a big sleuth. I don't care about chasing uh, the Jews. And I don't care about you know going after all these other things. I want to save lives today. So if we shift to green energy, you say you're against war. It should be a no-brainer, right? And so if we shift to green energy today, we could do that what? By understanding how federal financing works. Ultimately, you see that it all leads back to economics. So when you're saying that you care about the environment and you care about making sure that your kids inherit an earth that's inhabitable, prove it to me. Get off your tax fetish and start realizing in order to make these changes, we're going to have to work with people outside of our progressive bubble. And we're going to have to make it sweet enough for them to come on board. And since taxes don't actually pay for shit at the federal level, why in the world would you fap to taxation? What is your fetish about that? Oh, you say that you want to solve income inequality. I'm with you there, too. That's why we talk about the federal job guarantee. Federal job guarantee immediately stops us from becoming destitute if the man lays us off. If we lose our jobs, we are no longer destitute. We have our health care, not this $1,200 a month COBRA. We have our health care covered. We have all these different aspects covered. And if we do that, then guess what happens to income inequality? Because all those bills that you were spending on went right to the top, right? That income gap goes, that's what happens. So while you're worried about taxes when they're deleted, why not worry about giving the little guy help? Forget sticking it to the big guy. Let's save the little guy from starvation. Let's save the little guy from exposure in the winter. Let's save the little guy from having to skip his doctor's appointments because he doesn't have enough money for his copay. Let's go ahead and focus instead on saving lives and saving the planet. And then after we solve the misery, then you can get your fetish on with the taxation to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Okay. But in the short term, let's worry about lives. Let's worry about the planet. I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives. Hoping you have a great night.